Holy sh**. That is the highest number I have ever seen in I don't even know what to say. This laptop in front of me is supposed to be the frickin' bee's knees. This is a MacBook Pro with Apple's brand new M5 processor, which they have touted to contain the single fastest performance core on any processor on the fucking planet. And that is a pretty big deal. It's a game that Apple has been leading for some time now. And the M5 chip in this brand new MacBook Pro 14 inch should be no exception. I have heard some pretty crazy things, but to be honest, this has been kind of a weird launch, right? You have the world's fastest single processing core and you don't even run an event for it? They just randomly dropped this new MacBook Pro on like a Wednesday morning went, well, if you want to pre-order it, I guess so. Okay, before we get into it though, what else is in the box here? We've got a sleeve two meter USB-C to MagSafe cable. That's the fancy magnetic thing. Whoa, this is really long. You'll see if I stick it on here, whoop, it just magnets on there. And then you can't accidentally just like shit rock your USB-C cable. And then we got propaganda and no Apple stickers because this timeline is cursed. And last but not least, the charging brick. Now by default, these come with a 70 watt charging brick, which to be honest, for a base MacBook Pro, which is the configuration I have, this is plenty, but you can optionally switch to a 96 watt charger if you feel like it for 20 bucks. But I, I wouldn't bother to be honest. Look at that. Wow, USB-C, that's pretty cool there. And that's it. That's all that's in the box, man. Look at that. Wow. Charger, cable, yeehaw. Look at that. It's a MacBook and it comes in the exact same color, exact same shape and exact same weight as last generation. Maybe that's why Apple like didn't have an event to talk about this thing. We'll get into the CPU soon because the specs on paper sound very, very impressive. But first, let's take a look at the ports on the outside. We've got the usual MagSafe dual Thunderbolt 4 and 3.5 mil audio jack that we're used to on the past couple generations of MacBook. And on the other side, we've got an SD card reader, another Thunderbolt 4 type C port and an HDMI port. It's all the same as last generation. It's not till we get to the inside. Okay, well, a little bit more inside than this is. I mean, the keyboard, the speakers, the webcam, everything that you can see here is also the same. And if you don't believe me, see what I mean? They're exactly the same. M4 Max, 14 inch, M5, 14 inch. There's also another thing that hasn't changed and this one has me pretty cheesed. So here's a Wi-Fi speed test of the M4 MacBook running over six gigahertz to the Enterprise 7 access point behind me from Ubiquiti. And as you can see, it's very fast with Wi-Fi 6E. Look at that, bam, over a gigabit both ways. However, if we do the exact same test on the M5 MacBook, we get pretty much the same results. That's because it also still only uses Wi-Fi 6E, when Wi-Fi 7 is pretty much the standard on every high-end device, including the new iPhones. I literally got speed test results higher than this off of an iPhone. That means my iPhone has faster peak Wi-Fi speeds, which is kind of weird, to be honest. It's just a little bit frustrating. It's a pretty first world problem, to be honest. The only genuinely new thing is buried deep, deep within this laptop, the M5 chip. Now, if you don't look too closely, you'd be forgiven for thinking, M5, what's the difference from an M4? Well, it's an entirely different series of car, okay? <laughs> but in this case, the CPUs, they don't have more cylinders or I guess cores in CPU speak. It's four performance cores and six efficiency cores on the M4 and the M5. They also both have 10 GPU cores, but they've snuck some like little extra spice in there because they're claiming some pretty serious stuff. I mean, right off the bat, delivers up to 15% faster multi-threaded performance over last generation. That's a pretty substantial increase. That's like what AMD and Intel, when they release a new CPU, that's what they shoot for. And based on the testing I've done so far, the numbers do look very impressive. But that's not it because they've also apparently buffed the GPU. The baseline performance, no ray tracing, no AI, is supposedly 30% better. And if you're looking at specifically ray traced apps, 45% is what they claim. And if it's anything to do with AI, maybe the AI features in Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve or something like Topaz Video AI, you should see a pretty substantial increase, supposedly like multiple times faster. And to be honest, I would not be surprised at all if the AI performance is way better on this laptop. Having dedicated hardware versus having none is a Huge, huge buff. Now stepping back a second, I ended up with the absolute base model spec. I just wanted to try it out as, to be honest, most people buy laptops, just like whatever is the off the shelf model, but you can do a number of upgrades. The only thing that's really different this time around is that you can get a four terabyte SSD as the max instead of a two terabyte SSD. But to be honest, with how much Apple charges, 
1200 US dollars to add three and a half terabytes more storage? Ridiculously expensive. And why you might want to consider a NAS instead. Fortunately, Ugreen sponsored this portion of today's video for me to show you exactly that. The brand new Ugreen DH2300. Ooh. 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 It's super affordable. And after you slide in your choice of two hard drives, you'll likely end up with a heck of a lot more storage than you could fit in a MacBook. Up to 60 terabytes raw, in fact. That's enough space to store thousands, thousands of movies and photos, even if you choose to mirror your drives for extra safety. I just need to do the sound effects for me, okay? It's kind of like having your own personal cloud out, except without the pesky monthly subscription. And don't worry, even if you're not experienced, the setup process is super easy. It just takes a couple minutes and you can even do it on your phone just by tapping with NFC. There it is. And in just a few more clicks, you can be backing up your iPhone or Android phone's entire photo album or your new M5 MacBook with Apple Time Machine. Like the rest of their NAS lineup, the DH2300 can handle the whole family with a permission system so you can keep your personal data separate from the rest. Cool, wow. right? And it's fast too. With a wired connection, you can be transferring it speeds up to 125 megabytes a second. Yeehaw. That's faster than Google Drive or Dropbox will let me do even with my five gigabit internet connection. It's just that easy. And whether you're using your phone or your laptop, you can connect and manage the whole thing remotely too. If you want even more protection, you can back up your Ugreen NAS to another Ugreen NAS or the cloud automatically too. But even if you're not copping the latest from Apple, why not solve your storage woes with 20% off the DH2300 using code DH2300OFF at the link down in the description. And that's the same pricing they're doing on Black Friday, so you're not gonna miss out. Go, run, get rid of them storage problems. I'll tell you what, this has an eight core processor. It can run a Plex server too, okay? Let's try the keyboards. We've got the M5 on the left here and then my M4 Max. That shouldn't matter. The actual keyboard and chassis and whatnot should be the same. So let's try the keyboard. You should subscribe to Jakku's Patreon at jakku.com slash Patreon. You can get sick exclusive content and pictures of my fluffy cat and other things like Pretty cool, right? The keyboards, they're the same. I don't detect anything different about them. The trackpads feel the same. As for the display, it's still the same 14.2 inch ProMotion high refresh rate XDR goodness that was present on the last generation. We're talking 1600 nits peak brightness in HDR, 1000 nits full screen sustained, and 1000 nits SDR brightness. It's a fantastic panel and it really doesn't get much better than that on a laptop aside from maybe an OLED. But with how good the HDR and color management is in macOS, Man, for professional work right out of the box without any calibration, it's pretty hard to beat a Mac. And as for the webcam, it does look a bit different. Does it look different? Let me clean it off. Yeah, okay, there we go. I mean, you tell me, does that not look and sound like the exact same 12 megapixel camera? I don't know, that looks pretty same to me. Which is not a bad thing, it's a decent webcam. What about the speakers, man? They, I, they sound pretty much the same. I almost feel like the new laptop sounds like a tiny bit better, but maybe that's just because like the speakers aren't broken in, dude. I honestly, I, I honestly don't know. I did just notice that there is something actually different. Do you see the mute buttons right there? They changed the label on the mute button. There we go. New physical feature confirmed. That's how you can tell if somebody at your school's cool and it's got the latest doohickey. Hmm, do they have a cool mute button? Yeah, then they're rich and they got an M5. I like M5, very nice. I have a chair. Oh wait, hold on, there's other things too. The function key is also different. Man, this does not matter at all. <laughs> it's been one of those kind of days, all right. Sit down, sit your bum down. Sit your bum down, fluffy boy. Is the M5 Arlo approved? But does it perform? Let's find out. Starting with, of course, Cinebench 2024, because I really gotta know, is this really the fastest CPU core in the world? Psh, 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 psh. Holy f Cinebench takes an insanely long time to run, but holy shit, that is the highest number I have ever seen in Cinebench. <laughs> Compared to an M1, it is quite literally almost double. 200 points in Cinebench 2024 single threaded is ridiculous. Like what, a 5800X isn't even a hundred points. It's literally double the single threaded performance of that. That is fuck crazy. Now I did do all of the same testing on an identically specced M4 base model MacBook Pro 
14. And then I also ran it on my M4 Max 14 inch, just as a comparison point. I mean, sometimes when there's huge generational uplifts, the, like the top dog from the last generation e is even hurting, but the M5 doesn't quite top the M4 Max. It's still a much beefier chip with a lot more cores. That being said, the M5 is a seriously impressive chip. In Cinebench's single core test, we're up from 173 to 200 points. That's almost a 16% increase. Multi-threaded is an even better showing up from around 1,000 to nearly 1,200. That's almost 17%. In Blender's Monster Under the Bed demo, it's not quite 15%, but still a good uplift. And then when you get to the GPU, that's where it starts to go, whoo! The same Blender Monster Render on GPU is over a 35% performance increase. In Puget Bench's Photoshop test, it's only about 10% faster. But again, if we go back to something that's a little bit more GPU intensive, like Adobe Premiere with Puget Bench, it's an over 30% increase again. And while DaVinci Resolve didn't see quite as much of an increase, 25% gen over gen, Woo, I like it. But what about gaming? Gaming! Single-threaded performance can be a huge performance uplift on its own, even with the same GPU, and so can increasing the memory bandwidth, and so can improving cache. All things Apple has done to yield nearly a 90% performance uplift in Shadow of the Tomb Raider from the base M4 to the base M5. That is freaking crazy. Cyberpunk wasn't as crazy of an uplift, but still 42%. Now these aren't ray trace titles, so maybe there is other games that will see even bigger uplifts. For example, in 3D Mark's Solar Bay Extreme Test, which is a ray traced synthetic game style benchmark, the M5 was over 50% faster. It's astonishing. It is seriously, I mean, I was stoked when the M4 chips came out. I was like, damn girl, woo, that's some performance, but M5, god damn. You know, it's like when you see an M5 on the Autobahn, just like <laughs> rip right past you. That's what this is. This is a <laughs> This thing freaking rips. Wait, okay, hold on. There's one more thing I haven't tried yet. The OG Passmark performance test, my favorite. This is gonna be a pretty interesting number because Passmark has a really awesome performance test database that you can look up online pretty much any CPU you can think of and see what the overall CPU score is and then a single threaded score. Usually like the top, top of the line processors that are built for gaming, maybe see a single threaded CPU score on Passmark of around 4,500, maybe 5,000. I mean, let, let me see. Even a 9800X 3D, which is like whew, really fast CPU, 4427 is the average score right now. A 14900K, 4700. Even Intel's top consumer chip, the 285K, scores a 5100 single threaded score. But the M5, six, thousand holy fuck so clearly the m5 is the real deal it is a monumentally fast cpu and seemingly apple's claims of it being the fastest performance core out there depending on the application is real i cannot wait to see what an m5 pro and an m5 max look like whenever those come out probably sometime next year i suspect oh man just wait till this thing's in a mac mini that thing's gonna slay Woo! Now, aside from just being like pretty dang fast, the other main selling point for Apple's laptops and why they come with such a high recommendation from me is because of how power efficient they are. You can take pretty much any modern MacBook with an M series CPU and use it pretty much all day without any issue. Which begs the question, how's the battery life? Did they make this faster by just increasing how much power it draws? Now I did do an endurance test on the battery, so we'll talk about that in a sec, but what I'm curious about is how much power does it draw when it's running a stressful load, like a benchmark? So at the end of our single core test, the M5 laptop had consumed 2.2 watt hours and the M4 laptop 2.165 watt hours. And while it's clear the M5 definitely draws more power in a test like this, it also finishes the test faster. So the efficiency kind of argument is a little bit more complicated. It does seem like it is ever so slightly less efficient in this single core test, but you get stuff done faster. Now, if you're worried about the battery life of the M5 being worse, they do rate them both for the same 24 hours, at least on Apple's spec page. And in my testing, in an endurance test, so a lower brightness with the video optimization feature turned on, I got pretty much identical battery life, right around 17 hours, streaming like a Blu-ray quality 1080p video over Plex to both of these machines. And that 
is very, very impressive. And it's really good to see that the battery life hasn't gotten worse. What remains to be seen is how the battery life would be under a stressful situation. Maybe I'll throw some numbers up here if I end up having time to do that. But realistically, you're gonna be doing the work substantially faster, especially if it's something that involves ray tracing like in Blender, a video game, or anything AI related, man. These new laptops, Frickin' cook. And last but not least, I wanna see if Apple's claims of enhanced AI performance are true. We've got more memory bandwidth. We have the neural accelerators, which I'm not sure would get used in LM Studio, to be honest. But I've got the 8 billion parameter Quen 3 VL model that just came out a few days ago in four bit mode because that fits pretty nicely within the 16 gigs of RAM that each of these computers have. Write me a 500 word poem. We're getting 27 tokens a second output on the M5 and only 21. That is a, a huge performance buff. Let me let me try one more message. How do I ride a bike? 500 words. Ah, oh, dude, the M5 is cooking the M4. They're giving me like very differently structured outputs, which is kind of funny. It's, it's so weird, man. AI is so weird. I hate it. I fuck hate AI, but you are not racing a squirrel. Wow, it is, wow, oh, it, it's, it's losing its mind. That's not terrifying at all. Uh, write a fictional story about a new MacBook that finally has Wi-Fi 7. <clears throat> there you have it, the M5, faster processor, it's faster for LLM workloads, look at that. Around 25% faster too, that's that's not anything to, to gawk at. That's sizable. So what does that leave us with? Well, it might not look anything special, but inside it's got a heart of Processing cores, holy shit. <laughs> They've done it again. It's insanely fast. The battery life is ridiculous. It's just a great laptop. Nay, I say the best laptop of the year, genuinely. What else touches it? Like it's not a Windows laptop that's touching it, I'll tell you that. Whew. I mean, unless you need Windows, unless you need SolidWorks. But honestly, even then, just run Parallels, man. Psh, Windows 11 for ARM is mint. Now, aside from gaming, which maybe is a topic of discussion for an entirely separate video, get subscribed and let me know down in the comments if you wanna see something like that. It's really hard to argue that something is a better laptop than this. There are applications where you might want more RAM and Apple really, really cheeses you for the storage, but man, it is so good otherwise. But let me know what you guys think about the MacBook Pro M5 down in the comments. Leave a like if you liked the video and be sure to check out my Patreon at jacku.com slash Patreon, which is a fantastic way to support the channel directly and enable me to go and buy silly laptops to play around with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah! Shut up, Fridge.